if we lower our government's tariffs, uh, what will happen to our, our unions? Which unions? Those unions that are in export industries will benefit. Those unions which are in industries which at the moment could be substituted for by imports would lose. There is no single statement that can be made about unions any more than there is about any other organization. What is true is that free trade, uh, let's broaden your question, because we ought not to look only at unions. We have unions that are labor monopolies. We also have producer monopolies. We also have restrictions on free competition on the side of producers. There is no more effective way in my opinion, of promoting competition than the free trade. If you want to cut down monopoly power in this country, the way to do it is not to double the budget of the Department of Justice Antitrust Division and have more 20-year suits against, uh, against IBM. The way to do it, the most effective single way to do it, would be to enact free trade so that competition worldwide would come to bear and that would undermine monopoly powers all over of unions on the one hand and of industrial monopolies on the other. Yes, ma'am. From, from what I've read and have learned, I seem to feel more sympathy for your policies than, than some of, the, in your opinions, than the others. I wondered what books or writers besides Adam Smith, as you mentioned, uh, influenced you more towards the positions you hold? What facts, you know, what learnings and things? Well, that's a very interesting and a very difficult question to answer I, because I really can't answer you in terms of a single book or a single one or two books. I was trained as an economist at the University of Chicago in an excellent department of economics, I think the greatest in the country, even before I was there. <laughs> <laughs> And it's an interesting thing that professional economists in general in their professional work are led by a study of the way in which a market operates to be far more sympathetic to the use of the market than are most other groups. The great books in this tradition, uh, after Adam Smith, are, of course, uh, the works of David Ricardo, John Stuart Mill, Alfred Marshall, and coming down to the present day, Frank Knight, Friedrich Hayek, Ludwig von Mises, you have a great series of books in Britain, Lionel Robbins, John Jukes. It's very hard to name just one or two. I think one of the most important of all the books that influenced a lot of people, myself included, was Friedrich Hayek's book, The Road to Serfdom, published in 1944. And it remains a powerful and compelling book on what I think is not so much in the area of free trade as in the broader problem the major problem of our time. Yes, sir. Uh, in your formal lecture, you uh, mentioned the dollars and the yen and how they should e try to equal. Uh, how long would this take, and what about the steel worker who is, is now being laid off? What will happen to this person? Well, in the first place, it takes a very short period of time. The foreign exchange market is a very free and volatile market. With respect to the steel worker that is laid off, that is a problem that should not be related to international trade. We want to have an economy and a society in which you have flexibility, in which people shift from producing one product to producing another if demand changes. If the public at large suddenly decides that they would like to buy one kind of clothing instead of another kind of clothing. If people decide they don't want to have their hair cuts, what should be done about the unemployed barbers? and so on down the line. And the answer, I believe, there is, in the first place, we now have mechanisms, in my opinion, a unduly complex and extensive set of mechanisms to take care of people who are temporarily displaced on this ground. In my opinion, our present mechanisms are unwise, and what we should have from this point of view is a general provision all over to make sure that nobody is in distress. One steel worker may be a real problem. Another may have immediate other sources of income which displace it. We ought not to have any program for steel workers. We ought not to have any program uh, for barbers. 
If we're going to have a program, we ought to have a program to help anybody who is in distress. I've discussed this at some length in connection with proposals for a negative income tax elsewhere. And in my opinion, that would be an effective and ample solution to the problem.